Okay. Gosh, it feels a little too soon. It's almost like we're a whole week early. Hi. Wow. <laughs> wow. I know. It's like I have there's a schedule. So we're playing a week early because I've got scheduling things that I need to do next week. So hi, welcome back. In, in the words of words that Hawk has definitely said to somebody, it's better a week early than a week late. Uh, <laughs> you're you are welcome. <laughs> Hawk, there's a whole child present in this room. You can't say that. He can, and he and would. You, he, can't he, he will, and then he'll say, go ask your father. <laughs> yeah. Patient's like, what the hell does that mean? So, hello. Welcome to Rise of Tiamat. And, um... Yeah, this... Because I had I had a whole week of prep, I'm just, like, flying by the seat of my pants today, so... Welcome to Rise of Tiamat. This is a 5th edition module that is uh, run out of the Tyranny of Dragons campaign, published by Wizards of the Coast. But, you know, Lucy, Goosey, we just use the bones. This is where we are. Jeez. So, if you're tuning in and you're like, wait, I don't remember that in the module, that's because I wrote it. <laughs> something, something, plot progression through character involvement. I don't fucking know. That's how this works. Anyway, so... That's how I run my game. It doesn't always have to be how you run your game, and that is a-okay. So, with that, uh, do we have any fun announcements before we get into the do the we, fun uh, complexities of dragon politics? Do we have any fun announcements? Speaking I don't know. Is there of, anything fun? But, speaking but, of the dragons, the soundboard ready. it's uh -huh. Cousin the Dinosaurs. Did you we know they're them. currently they're currently excavating the largest known dinosaur tibia to date? Apparently, yeah. it's a real shindig. Oh man! <laughs> <You're> my... <laughs> you can't say that in a in a room full of dinosaur nerds because I was actually invested in them <laughs> digging up the tibia of a dinosaur. Uh huh. It's a sh <laughs> real shindig. Oh. I don't find this humorous. Hey. Hey. <laughs> so. oh. Thank you, Jeremiah. Are there any other <laughs> announcements? <laughs> anything? Anything? Anyone w wishes to share, past, present, or otherwise? Uh, I think. No. Oh, in, sh yeah. Uh, where was I actually have something. You, you keep talking. I have yeah, a thing. I have yeah. a thing. I gotta go in, grab it. In one week, it's gonna be my son's birthday. He's going to turn a total of six years old. That Corgi is a menace. And I don't know what to get him. Because everything I get him, he just destroys and eats. Although he's he's this big, he has the heart of a Rottweiler. Should we quickly put my headphones on? We'll hold just him shred in. everything. Yeah, every toy I give him. I give him like the toughest toys ever and he just destroys them. Except for a crab. I think he just likes the crab. He has the, he took all the stuffing out, but the the crab is intact. Everything else is destroyed. All the the yeah. the tough whatever they're called, they're all. Speaking destroyed. of dogs with like jaws made of steel, um, he's still working at it. Just thought oh. you should know. Gave, gave Champ a treat. I'm gonna try that. Like sure. what? Five minutes before we started streaming, mm -hmm. and uh, he's notorious for like shredding through every treat that I've ever given him. But I gave him a little cup of dog ice cream that's filled with peanut butter, and he's. Still down there, and I love that. Yeah, I'm that. One that. is napping like he worked today. <laughs> Pulled a 10 hour shift at the factory. Anyway. Probably just sat on the so, sofa and cried. You're valid. I have an announcement oh. because this actually just showed up in the mail for me. Ooh. But, but uh, ooh, ooh, ooh. there's a uh, there's a book out uh, written by my father, Richard Stone. Richard P. Stone, I believe that's what it is, on his book. And it is The Survivors of the Mutated Lands. Just Please. came out. Look at that Please. fancy cover. Nice. So cool. And uh, kind of, it, I don't, don't want to say it's a fun fact, but this is actually like a little like trivia piece for people to know. But um, the um, the character on the cover of this, Commandy, who's kind of like one of the main uh, characters within his story, uh, is actually um, her original player from the Gamma World module that he would run in his middle school days was a student of his through um when he was teaching like seventh grade science classes and so she is the face of the character on this uh, as kind of a homage to her because she had passed away a couple years ago from 
uh, and like some like unforeseen com like com complications. So, as a tribute to her, the her face is the face of the character. So I thought you should know that. Good so, so yeah, the book's out. It's on Amazon. Go look it up under my father's author name, Richard P. Stone. You can get his entire trilogy now because he's now a published trilogy yeah, yeah, author. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's working on his fourth one right now. I'm actually doing the um, the read through of it and giving him uh, edits and notes and whatnot. So that's fun. <laughs> There's a lot of uh, fun things happening in that one. So with that. Let's go ahead and go through intros. Hi, I'm Vic. I am your DM. I have an ice cream because I wanted a little treat for myself. Seven. <laughs> who doesn't love a drumstick? And uh, sharing the same plane of existence. Oh, you're done with it already. Okay, I shouldn't have said anything. I also have lots of drumsticks. That's true. So that's where someone really should have played the, the rimshot noise. <laughs> so too late. Minimize too late. We missed, the, we missed the window. Anyway. Sharing the same plane of existence as me. Hey, Tabby, who are you playing? For the end, Tabitha, I will be playing Pigeon slash Rosemary, the tiefling sorcerer slash raider. Very nice, very nice. And hey, Jesus. Hey, hey. Uh, I'll be playing Tarsius Chaddington. He is a Minotaur Barbarian uh, fighter who is doing his best. And things, everything's gonna turn out okay because why would it not? Everything's gonna be okay as long as you think it is. That's how that that's works. Yes, how that works. That is, that is the, the 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 mentality. Like, let's play someone with the opposite mentality that I have. That's, that's that's some real character building right <laughs> there. God, I commend you. <laughs> that's almost like playing a, a character with confidence when you do not have any. Love it. <laughs> Oh, that's that's a struggle. Yep. Hi, hey, Jeremiah. Who are you playing? Cardelia Chaddington, a fighter, blood hunter, rogue, Medusa. Medusa. The there, we, there it is. I'm like, where is it? <laughs> you can't forget the hair. That that is practically your personality, sir. It is. <laughs> <laughs> well, they have their all all 27 have their own personalities, but you know. Yes. <laughs> and uh, not to forget, like last week, uh, hey, hey, Sydney. Hey, well, I am Sydney. I will be playing Nicodemus D. Hawkins, uh, the human rune knight and paladin of Bahamut. Congrats on the promotion. Yeah, you know. It's, and it's, uh, it's, it's a nice yeah. thing to happen since the events lately have been really a. Dragon it's like you were just given up. <laughs> no. You know, I had a I had a bit where I was gonna give Lynn a hard time for not being here, but you know what? Is I'm that really dragging you, you down? I'm gonna need you to clock oh. out. <laughs> so <laughs> anyway. I have characters that got jokes. Hawk no. is a joke. Jokes got Don't him. say that to him. If you actually say that to his face, he will cry. He will and cry. You know that. He will. <laughs> he I will cry. He will. He's very fragile right now. Yep. Speaking Aww. of fragility, so our uh, our resident cleric, Larkspur, uh, is going to continue his... Uh, apparently he's on his Odin's journey of his dreamless sleep, so he's just going to be doing that for a while, you know, learning the knowledges of the universe, uh, due to uh, Lynn uh, currently having some scheduling with her work. She's putting in a lot of hours at the Keebler Elf Factory, so we wish her well on that. Mm. <laughs> oh, she's gonna love that. Right. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if she's either gonna, like, cry when she sees me when I move up there, or if she's gonna just assault me with a bat. She's gonna we'll find be out. like... Yeah. Mm, that was good. Okay. Why, so... Why not both? <laughs> Why not both? All right. Let's go ahead and roll that bean footage. All right.
afraid it's gonna melt. I'm like, no, <laughs> my chocolate. No, chocolate. My chalky. My chalky cone. Anywho. Oh, are we back? Crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Not me. Just enjoying a little treat. So. Everybody should enjoy. Let's do recap. Treat. Oh shit, I don't even have my notes up. That's great. That's fun. This is how present we are. Oh wait, I did have my notes up. I It was my first fucking tab. Cool. Alright. So, you guys are back in Waterdeep after a rather uh, long stint in the Termitian countryside. It was only a week, but you know, that was a week. It was. Boy, was that a week. <laughs> Yeah. Oh. You had just recently come back from Termish uh, with the Blue Dragon Mask. You were originally charged with rescuing Iskander, a red wizard trying to defect from the Cult of the Dragon uh, at the Tower of Zonthal, and he had offered you the Blue Dragon Mask as a prize to rescue him and return him safely away from the, from the tower. Through your adventures in the tower... You uh, dealt with a lot of uh, wizard fuckery, um, a semi-sentient tower built out of the corpse of a crystal dragon. You've uh, learned that all of Hawk's um, hometown was part of a very freakish and very uh, a not great experiment where the Red Wizards were kidnapping them, turning them into draconic abominations, and releasing them back into town as sleeper cells. Hawk lost his family in the experimentation, his mother and father being a part of it. His sister, however, had been targeted by Tiamat herself, having a long memory of some uh, some plucky uh, rune knight calling her a bitch back in the Sea of Moving Ice. So Tiamat uh, made sure to make his sister her new avatar. However, as stated by Tiamat herself, this avatar is not perfect. It is not as strong as she would like it in order to house her essence while she try to, tries to work to free herself from her prison in the Nine Hells. You fought with the avatar, barely scraped by with your lives, uh, Larkspur being physically hurled into hell as a consequence of standing up to her. But he made it back kind of okay. He's comatose for a while. We don't know how long, but he's going to kind of... He's hes trying to recover from the uh, sudden change in climates. So, you're back in Waterdeep. You are trying to figure out what to do with the Blue Dragon Mask. As Patience had made it apparent that she had lifted it out of Iskander's bag without anyone knowing. She had Cole cast a non-detect spell on it for to, to at least cover like the first eight hours of trying to figure out what to do with it. And for Cole, it was getting in contact with Jamal. Jamal getting in contact with the Council of Dragons, who say that they are going to meet you outside of Waterdeep to discuss what to do next. With that, you kind of went about your day, kind of preparing what's little you, that you can for what you knew. You visited Jakey's Junk Stop, picked up a few fun items. Yeah, I believe me, I forgot to get back on everything about it. It happens. <laughs> but we'll we'll circle back to that whenever. You um. Uh, found out that there was an emergency council meeting called uh, at Castle Waterdeep by the, uh, you know, Council of Waterdeep, Council of Nobles. And when you made your way over there, uh, Perseus and Cordelia were met with their adopted parents, Chatt uh, the Chattingtons, having just just fresh off the boat from their trip from Neverwinter. Chattington is a little, a little, he's a little out of sorts. He hasn't gotten the chance to refresh himself <laughs> from the journey. And, uh, you know, the jet lag, what can I say? Had us in first class of the Emirates, like, 
Such it was a hard a, time. It was a slog, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> you met uh, the council, you kind of recounted uh, more or less what happened and listened to them as they are more or less preparing for the inevitable that the cult is amassing. The cult knows that they are on the cusp of victory. And so what they are doing next is trying to organize to siege all major cities along the Sword Coast, so to have them swear fealty to their goddess, Tiamat. Otherwise, they would fall. So the council is working hard to figure out measures to protect Waterdeep in the inevitable of a siege taking place in their major city, which there hasn't really been a siege historically in quite some time. This, this is a well-fortified city along the coast, specifically against dragons. So it's a matter of just figuring out the specifics of that. And so with that, the council adjourns. You still have the rest of your day. It is... I'll say it's it's about early afternoon. Still haven't heard from Jamal or the council. What would everyone like to do? So let me get. So you guys are currently standing outside the castle. We'll start standing outside the council room. I will say, as they have more or less dismissed you to talk about more private matters of the city. This is the wrong map. I see what I did. One moment. Uh, eh. There you go. I guess I'll just first um, catch up some more with with the parents. Okay. And uh, I also asked them, was like, I know you just got here, but have you have you been to Uncle Wes's place? As, uh, first, Chattington. Just be like, oh, West, his new establishment is here. Oh, it must be so quaint. I have to go see it. <laughs> it's been far too long. I've tried to write <coughs> him, but he hasn't responded to my letters. And truthfully, I'm a little hurt. Oh, like he... 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 he really can't read that well, Arthur. <clears throat> West in the back, like, I've got the dyspraxia, <laughs> Cowerbow, dyslexia. <laughs> <laughs> that. Um, as far as I know, every time uh, Uncle Cow tries to teach him how to read a book, the book just catches on fire. For some reason i don't know i don't know if that's true or not that's just a sign of his immense power <laughs> as an adventurer of the gentleman's guild <laughs> i forgot uh wes is a uh, fire druid right yes he is he is yeah. a wildfire druid <laughs> but according to chattington it's because of his uh, exceptionally high level yeah. within the gentleman's guild of adventurers <laughs> He's like, as you know, I have a power scaling system for our adventurers in the guild. <laughs> Let me go through the specifics. <laughs> and he, he tells the specifics as we go to... <laughs> he, will, he will run you through the most asinine power scaling system that he has put in place. <laughs> like that you would, you would find in any shonen anime that cares about power scaling. Mm -hmm. and they're like, and here is his, and it's like down to like XP numbers or some shit. Ah, <laughs> uh, Cordelia like, will. Your uncle is here at a level, uh, as we would call it, 18. But however, I, you know, the founder, am up here at level 20. That is the highest level we could muster for this guild. Uh, as Chaddington talks, or. What's his first name? Chadworth, right? Mm -hmm. Father Chadwick. Chad. Father Chad Chaddington. Chad Chadwick Chaddington. Yeah. Uh, he will... Um, uh, Cordelia will try her hardest to to pretend to be enthusiastic. 
<laughs> Darcy's, how do we feel about learning the secrets of the Gentleman's Guild <laughs> and the power scaling system? I think he would be all about it. <laughs> uh, or I'm so I, where am is... I on this scale? And how do I get stronger? So we're going to have to go through a regiment of measuring your power. There's, We usually have some kind of spyglass or something to oh. really get a gauge for it, but I don't have it on me right now. Oh, okay, okay. The last time I used it, it uh, broke after level 9. Oh. <laughs> That was very powerful. That's. I want. I hope I can be level nine one day. Over nine. Over nine. Over. <laughs> <laughs> so who's this Goku guy? Where is he at? <laughs> uh, we don't put him on the list anymore. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> Superman. <laughs> I bet, I bet the Goku and Superman could do one v one. As you guys are talking about the power scaling systems of Chattington's uh, very illustrious adventurers guild, mm -hmm. you know, so, and I'll say Samantha sounds very, you know, excited. More or less, to uh, in in her own way, to see West's new tavern, and is that where we're heading right now? We're heading to the tavern. Yeah, we gotta eat eventually. Oh, of course. Yeah, it's <laughs> just past. It's lunchtime. Yeah. Just had breakfast. Now we gotta have lunch. Yeah, that's Fair enough. Okay. Uh, patience. Guys, in this party, we gotta eat. I was, I was about to ask him, like, patience, Hawk. What are what are we doing? Kind of just following, hmm. fighting the urge to go back to Donnie's house and check on Lark. Um, heavily contemplating going back to the guardhouse and seeing what time Farron gets off work. I had to add on the last word. Um, uh, and are you are you hiding your uh, like your face or something like that or like? Or does it seem like you're angsty, or you want to leave, or something like that? How, forlo how forlorn uh -huh. are we, Hawk? Uh... <clears throat> but you feel uh, feel like you need to follow, kind of like that sort of deal. Probably that, like, you can tell that he's kind of... Not totally feeling himself. Like, obviously when y'all met him, he was kind of like... A little arrogant and kind of like big headed and, and doing whatever he thought and thought he was the hottest shit ever. And right now it's very obvious that he doesn't really feel that way, but he seems to be trying to seem that way. And it's probably not working. Okay. But he's also kind of not in a place where he's sure what he wants to do. Mm -hmm. And so he's kind of just going with the flow because... He has to do something, otherwise it'll be demon time, and... Oh, not demon he time. He doesn't need that right now. Okay. Well, is like demon time is just what they call it when ah. I get zoomies. Ah. <laughs> I would like to zoom. <laughs> Imagine a barbarian subclass where it's not rage, it's just zoomies. <laughs> I would like to zoom. I love that. That's monk. <laughs> I love that. That's so great. <laughs> Monk, monks zoom. Oh my God. A more speed-based bar barbarian class. Oh, shit. <laughs> that would be something. <laughs> Totem of the zoom. Totem of Roadrunner. Meep, meep. Oh, love that. So, as you guys are leaving the, uh, the, the very uh, pristine gilded uh, gates of the castle ward stepping out into the crossroads about to head down back to the trade ward where Uncle West's tavern is I would like one brave soul to roll me a percentiles I do it I do it I do it Potted I said brave not enthusiastic Potted Potted. <laughs> that's trauma inducing in another game <laughs> yep 
Fun fact. Fun fact at another D and D campaign tabs playing, and uh, her character fought a corpse flower and lost, and her leg got infected, and we had to amputate her leg because it was going to turn her. She am she chose to amputate her leg, and otherwise she was going to turn into a plant zombie. And she's also a yes, yes, exactly that. <laughs> Why do I have one nearby? Don't worry about well, it. <laughs> I just that just seems like something you would have. And now she's afraid of plants. Or and now she's traumatized the plants. And 48. Okay. And so now, like, anytime we... Cause she's also a sorcerer, so anytime we chant potted plant, it's more like a threat. <laughs> Sorry, I was dehydrated. Um, Hydrate or die weight. Hydrate or die straight. Anyway. Can't do that either. <laughs> no, no, right? In Guess you gotta time. hydrate. So, all right. In that case, I will have everyone roll me uh, perception. Yes. As we are out on the streets, down the main tradeway of the road. Actually, to me. You know, I should probably have my character. I actually have a better. Oh, okay. Picture to work off of. Bam! Look at that. Love that. Ooh. Perception. The 17 for me. Wow. I have a 9. <laughs> Dirty 20. Uh, uh, 20, 17, 9. Plus 4 is. I'm bad at math. 17. <clears throat> Sitting there staring at my dice, willing wow. to just add itself. So I will say for you, Cordelia, it's it's less of a you're not p paying attention to your surroundings and more of a you're just having uh, catching up with mom. You know, she's asking you, how are you doing? You know, are you eating OK? You making sure that, you know, you're maintaining your weapons properly. Yeah. Like, she's like she's just doing the mom bit where she's like making sure that you're you're OK and you're alive. OK, yeah. I mean, I will tell her, too, that, yeah, Uncle cow has been teaching me how to maintain the sword he gave me. That's good. I'm glad. Because I tried to sharpen it before it like, electrocuted me. Apparently, I did it wrong. <laughs> yes, please be careful when maintaining your own weapons. Your own knowledge of what you wield is most important. Like, speaking of any exciting battles that you've seen that you would at least want to tell me. Um, you will just see an expression on her like like nom flashbacks. Oh god. <laughs> and, like, and like, even the snakes are just kinda like, oh then and then uh she remembers the the curse, like her petrifications like kinda came back. And then she was just like, oh, nothing too special. Of course. And she'll she'll kind of like <laughs> give you that knowing mom look. And she's like, wouldn't want to excite your father too much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, she would want to, he'll probably want to spar again. And, and, oh, and he's, going, he's going to hit the mannequin too hard. The mannequin, it'll bounce off the mannequin. It'll hit him in the nose. He sees his own blood. And then... It's a whole thing. <laughs> Samantha, I'm wounded. <laughs> I've abstained mortal imagery. <laughs> As that that is a flashback that Tarsius and Cordelia have in the back of their head, uh, trying to watch their father train with like, you know, like like a practice like sword made out of like you know wood, and it just smacks them in the face. And it's a good enchantment you put on their dead. Yeah. Right back. And you're just like, yeah, he he really he really like showed that man. He got it. He put on such a brave face as he's like trying not to cry through the tears and a broken tooth. So, as you guys are walking, I will say. So, Cordelia, you are engaged in that conversation with your mother. For everyone else, uh, as you enter the main uh, crossroad of Waterdeep. You start to see uh, flyers kind of like pasted up all along, like on every like available building space that you can see. And it kind of almost reminds you of when uh, Donnie was campaigning uh, for city council. And he had his guys like posting up flyers, whoever, trying to like 
really like get get him like the people's vote. And um, but as you look at the the flyers, you notice that it all bears a similar sigil, and it's a sigil that you have seen emblazoned on every like armor cloak what have you that you've seen of the cult of the dragon and it is they're they're all flyers basically stating that um Kiamat is coming swear your fealty swear your allegiance to the dragon queen and be spared of her wrath give water deep to Tiamat like basically it's like that kind of propaganda it's like let water deep side with Tiamat and you will live like you need like bask in her glory like all this good stuff like that's more or less what it's saying it is like covering every surface of every building like god i hate election year <laughs> uh-huh. man i think it was an election year when i was having Donny campaign sheesh whoops been a while <laughs> it's been a while <laughs> Look at it. And she's just gonna cast burning hands. Patience. Oh, I forgot Cole's there too. That's right. He he walked with you to the to the castle. Oh. And he's not want to leave you out of his sight. So you're How casting many- burning hands? Yeah, she's looking at it and then casting burning hands. Don't burn the building down, please. No, she's gra- she grabbed one of them off the wall and okay. looked at it and then cast burning hands. How yes, many I'm of these flyers are there? Fifteen. She didn't. A lot, like, a lot, like, like you're going down, like, I'm trying to think to akin this too, like, don't not to localize it, but you know when you're like going through Austin and somebody's like cover band is playing at a local place and their flyers are just everywhere. <laughs> litter. Got it. Yep. Um, it's 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 litter at that point. All right. Or is it no sign pollution? There you go. Yeah, sign pollution, basically. Uh, so what did you roll, patience? Fifteen, so no shoot. Okay, Boo. that's good. But you still casted burning hands in a crowded road. So, and you're just like just flushing it up on a building, right? No, she just did it on the one that she. So, I'm going to tell you right now, Burning Hands is a cone effect. It is. Yes, it is. It is a cone effect. Where it shoots 15 feet out in front of you in a cone. Oh, no. Not arson. It is. My yeah, that is arson. It, it's... I know, because it's... No, I mean, it's fine. If you want to run with it, we can run with it. There's just going to be a consequence. <laughs> I know the first thing you would think is that it's like shocking grass, but it's not. <laughs> you would think with a name like Burning Hands, it would be like that. That's almost like that is a mistake by the publisher that should probably be fixed. But yeah. Misnomers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just rip it. Okay, so you're just going to rip it up. Alright. Roll the rip paper. <laughs> With your strength. No, it's a sheet of paper. Yeah, you rip it up easily. Higher strength than coal, so. That's really fucking sad. Oh, like, wow, this is a tough piece of paper. <laughs> it's like, I think they lacquered it. Hold on. <laughs> he's, he's smart, okay? That's book smart, not street smart. Is, that boy is not smart. So. Alright, so you rip it up. One of the thousands of flyers that are just spread through the entire street. And I will say that, that as that is, uh, as you are doing that, you will start to hear the sound of uh, someone uh, ki- kind of like projecting their voice above the daily foot traffic. And if you follow the road a little bit ways down, uh, you will see kind of like sitting like kind of propped in front of like uh, a shop a um a green uh dragonborn with, with uh like uh, like three uh with like three other dragonborns just kind of like around them uh of varying chromatic colors uh, as they are all like holding the flyers 
And they are all wearing like the insignia of the cult as well. As they are openly, the, the green one is openly preaching to the crowd. Uh, specifically to any uh, dragonborn or dragon folk that are passing by in the area. Where they're just like, it is our duty to our mother to aid her in her conquest. She, her circumstance of being locked within the nine hells was a trick put in place by the devil lords themselves. This is not this is not something that like you know he's just going on about how it, it clear propaganda obviously <laughs> of just like you know it's uh, it's the evil devil lords of hell that, that had tr tricked her into this cage and she just wants to be free you know she didn't deserve this she's you know it, you know dragon kind is misunderstood and that it is those that shared the blood of dragons that need to stand by the mother of dragons like that's that's their main preach that's going on right now Hawk would kind of look at the party like hearing that and be like as badly as i would love to punch that guy in the face in the interest of laying low while we figure things out we should probably not make ourselves known Because I just heard the thunk with... of a chunky dice on Tabitha's table. Um, because they don't know where we went, hopefully. And it's probably best that we keep it this way because we still got a whole week to go. So I will have, uh, if anyone is listening into this sermon, um, which is what it is, I will have you roll me an insight. And what was that? What was that dice roll for, Patience? Oh, yeah. Yeah? Six. Six. Okay. Okay. Yes. So, Tarsius, they're just, you know, they've... They got a lot to say. Yeah, you know, you don't quite agree with it. You have their opinions. Sheesh. That was a whole ten. For hop. Oh fuck, our internet took a hiccup. Mm. Oh no! Huh! Oh, no. Come back! Yep, okay. That's fun. Don't worry, this guy's ears we are love to see it. gonna be our DM for the night. Yep. Nope. <laughs> Our internet took a nosedive. Oh no. Do you, uh, you want to take a little break? You want to give it a yeah, break? I just got the red, so we're going to have to reset. Okay, okay. all right. Okay, so. uh... Let me text real quick. Okay. Well, shit, I didn't expect it to be like this. To doing this. And movement of Roboto. Off my internet. What is D and D without technical issues? I mean, yeah. <laughs> it's not because of like fair. Because the internet's not due until what tomorrow or? Yeah, internet's not due until tomorrow. Okay, so it shouldn't be doing this. Cool. We are going to take a quick little break, and we'll be back in a minute, everybody. Oh, so have fun with this little intermission. A little break.
Alright, sorry about that, internet cut, so let's get back into the scene. So, alright, you have the green dragonborn uh, wearing the insignia of the cult with three other dragonborns, like intermittent, like different, like, chromatics just kind of hanging around, and, you know, preaching about the glory of Tiamat, about how she was wrongfully imprisoned, about how it is, it is the duty of her children to stand by her and to be there to accept her, you know, return to the mortal plane with, you know, open loving arms. Like, and like, he's making a point of like calling out to any dragonborn that happens to be passing in the area as this is happening. Um, and so, uh, one, one said dragonborn, you actually will recognize as, uh, Maloon, but as, uh, his witness protection name is Q. As you see the Moonstone Dragonborn just kind of like off to the side um, at a at a stall, like, you know, paying for some produce. And as um, he kind of like, uh, like they're trying to like point out like which produce that they want from the stand and is about to uh, hand over the money. Uh, the lady that is working the stand uh, kind of like half listening to like this like whole like scenario that's happening like just a few stalls down immediately uh for those that rolled on their insight 22 what did everyone else get do we remember it was a insight or perception it was insight for this one. Oh, insight oh, okay i think i don't Hawks think it was a 10 or an 11 i think mine okay. was a 6 it wasn't great mine It'll be a 15. 15, okay. So, Patience 16. and Cordelia. I'm Matt so, Pro, 16. Alright, so, so Patience and Cordelia. Uh, you, uh, I, I mean, it, it works. <laughs> so, between Patience and Cordelia, as uh, you're kind of like just taking in this whole ridiculousness that's happening, you can't help but notice uh, your eyes just kind of follow like any of like the. The, the bystander dragonborns and dragon folk that are just kind of like trying to move past and go on with their day. Like they're not trying to make eye contact with this person that's being very loud and in your face about this. But uh, when you, as your eyes kind of travel, you do spot uh, Maloon like trying to like purchase groceries at the stand. And the, uh, the woman that's uh, running the stand just kind of, you watch as at first she was, you know, very, you know, customer service -y. she was welcoming, and the, you just kind of watch as she gets very uncomfortable. And, um, uh, and just kind of stops meeting, uh, Maloon's eyes. And when, uh, they hand over the payment, she just kind of, like, quickly takes it, turns around, and just ignores Maloon. And for anyone else that's, like, shopping in the area that happens to be a dragon board, you just kind of watch as everyone's, like, averting their eyes. And not trying to pay any attention to them. And that's that's what's happening right now in this whole scenario. 
Interesting. Look, that's the one that's on the little apple box preaching, yes. And we're talking like a full apple box, not a half apple or a quarter. This is a full apple box. <laughs> that's how we know it's serious business. That's some serious business. Yeah, once you gotta when you gotta stand on that full apple, that is some serious business you gotta say. <laughs> And he's already tall for an individual, as you know, he's dragonborn. Like he's a little bit more lithe than most, as you would uh, find them, but he's fairly tall. As uh, patience, you feel Cole put his uh, hand on your shoulder, just like trying to like corral you away from that, as you guys are kind of making your way down the street. Um, Uh, and uh, for the Chattingtons, uh, Samantha, she's just kind of, she doesn't say anything, uh, Cordelia, but you'll see as your mom kind of like does that thing where her jaw kind of sets as she's trying not to, as there is something that is displeasing her very much mm -hmm. right now. And Chattington is just kind of like uh, fussing with his cravat, just like, oh, it's a little loose, <laughs> <laughs> which is his way of deflecting, as you've learned yeah. in your years. And he's just like, S Samantha, dear, I think my cravat's all out of sorts. <laughs> and she'll just be like, we'll fix it later. Just let's keep going. We don't want to keep West waiting. Oh, well, that is happening. What is what is happening? Are we continuing on or? I'm walking. Trying not to make eye contact. Um, I try to tell my snakes to not make eye contact. I don't know what they're doing. <laughs> uh, roll for snakes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they tell me. How do I roll snakes. for snakes? Uh, let's roll percentiles. Highest is they're going to be Every, very likely to listen to you. all 27? <laughs> yeah. We'll, we'll roll percentiles. The higher to 100, they'll listen. The lower, they will not. That is 65. All right, so they're gonna kind of like you—they—they they already were like kind of like watching, but then you um, say, "Hey, mind your business," and I'll just kind of swerve back into your hood. Yeah, uh, and I'll tighten my hood a little bit more to not be kind of singled out because yeah, who sees somebody with a full head of snakes? <laughs> you know. And and you and you do that you tighten like you kind of like secure your hood and make sure it's in place and as you do that um you'll feel uh samantha kind of like gently touch the back of your head like as a, a form of reassurance so okay. you walk your way through not paying much attention unless <laughs> what's going on patience <laughs> you just kind of stop this stare and Cole, having his hand on your shoulder, is trying to, like, push you along. Just be like... as it, He's trying to be as discreet as possible, just like, Rosemary, it's rude to stare. Uh -huh. Rosemary. Do I see that? Do we yeah, notice? Obviously. Okay. Uh, you, you would have noticed that, as you guys are walking, uh, Patience would have stopped to stare at the, at the whole issue that's going on. And as you guys are walking, Cordelia, you get that little, like, tingle in the back of your head we were just like it's quiet where's patience <laughs> talk to uh, as well yeah. just like i will look back where is she and then i see that yeah. like patience stopped and staring i'm gonna look at, i'm gonna nudge tarsius just like and then i'm gonna signal him to uh ride and then i point to Patience, so patience will continue walking. You're watching Cole doing, his in a way. <laughs> Cole doing his damnedest to gentle parent this very chaotic child. Yeah, I'll do and hand signals that. so that I don't speak out loud, I have basically. One question. Like, Cole, Cole has like both of his hands on your shoulders. He's like down on one knee at your level. And he's just like, Rosemary, we need to keep moving now. Please. Oh, well. okay. <laughs> but it's kind of like that. That's not what it is at all. It is spite. It's like she's staring at Colt, but she's staring past him. How far are they away? Oh god. Oh god. So I'm gonna say I you guys are with the. 
you guys are with the flow of traffic, so you're on the right side as God fucking intended. Yes. <laughs> Some people don't know how to fucking walk. Ugh. This is my this is me on my fucking Apple box where I'm like, look, you, it, uh, unless you're like in an in a place where the where the you know the left side of the road is the correct side of the road, fine, whatever, that's fine, I get it. However, walk with the flow. Yeah, walk with it's the just, flow. Uh, walk listen. with the flow. Don't walk against the flow. You are. <laughs> if you drive time. on the right side of the road, yeah. you walk on the right side of the walkway. Uh huh. And stay there. Why do you think uh, skating rings go in one direction? For the same reason. Literally. Same fucking reason. Dance floors go in one direction. For a reason. <laughs> the cha-cha yes, is patient. one direction. <laughs> that, ba that boy band is... I'm gonna say yes. Yes, that's, a, that's the point I was trying to make here. Was that you are on the right side of the road. <laughs> You're going with the flow of traffic. They are also on the right side of the road. They are currently along the same route as you guys, so you are within 60 feet. What are you doing, Patience? Is the second question is the one that is reaching, holding flyers in their hands. Like a, oh, God. Just ask a question. <laughs> she asks. No, 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 no. No, I assumption nothing. This is called deduction, okay? I am deducing this. I just asked. She has a question. She's asking if the cult member is holding something flammable. Papers. Yes. Are they within 60 feet? Okay, we're casting a spell. What are we doing, Patience? Well, like, Tarsus. Double time. Up, and she's <laughs> casting gust. Roll. Papers just fly out. Roll your, roll your d20 first. I was, I was told to go get the child. Who was like, Hawk, who was like, I said lay low, is like, I hope you turn into a plant. <laughs> I hope you turn into a plant. <laughs> oh, potted plant you would be nice right me now. Out. <laughs> also, anyway, so her finger's just going up, and then just a gust of air is just blowing up and hoping that the flyers go everywhere. Sure. Roll, roll me a arcana check. Your hell. Roll me an arcana. See how accurate we are. On this. Right. <laughs> He'd be like, "It is the will of Tiamat that is <laughs> wanting <laughs> the people to know." Like he's, that's so that's what's going to happen here. Okay, so you successfully. It'll be a scandal. So you successfully blow the flyers out of this dragonborn's hand. Like he gets startled, and it's like a sudden like wind just like rips through the the street, and everyone kind of like bundles himself a little like closer because it is you know it's getting to the jet dead of winter, and they are it's cold, and so you hit them with an icy wind as the flyers just scatter up into the air, and that is exactly what happens where the dragonborn says that uh it's like look even nature itself knows that change is apparent. It wants you to know. That she is coming. Like, so that... There you go. It's like, she will be here soon. It is... The solstice is within one week. Within one week, you will know her glory. I'm gonna, like, quickly approach Patience. Grab her. Give her uppies. Grab the dad. Give him uppies. Just looks oh normal. my god! This looks normal. He's just like... Point me down. Oh, 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 okay. <laughs> I'm pointing him down. God. Oh, do you want to go down? Okay. God. Grab him by yes, the collar. Yes, please. I am a grown man. I am a grown boy. No, you stay up there. <laughs> you are in air jail. Air jail? Air <laughs> and he's going to go and he's going to like try to grab Gren as to, to pick him up to like hurry him along too but the second that his hands go around that dragon's side like that dragon just, oh, just... pick up the baby okay <laughs> see and i thought i was gonna do what like daisy does and it's just gonna he's gonna kind of sit there and wiggle back for a minute and then just dead weight on the ground like no no, <laughs> no gren's a little more spicy around strangers that's fair yeah uh, Hen so. Henry does the Henry does the twister where he his head twists this way and his butt twists the other way. Oh, so nice, he's going yeah. like this. <laughs> so. That's more or less what Gren would have tried doing. Like if Cole tried to pick him up and he was like trying to like twist his head around to try to snip at his fingers, and it's just like okay, okay, fine, walk, walk for all I care. 
So, you guys hurry along, heading to the tavern as quickly as possible to avoid this whole issue. We haven't even and made you it will a make block. your what? We haven't even made it a block yet. <laughs> we haven't even made it a block, and it's just a whole fucking issue. Okay, so <laughs> let me get everyone in there. All right, I need you and you and you and you, not you. Patience and Cole. And where are the parents? So one, and two, and copy and paste. So we go to this tearful reunion. Best friends. Okay, ship. We make our way into the burning boar. Hurriedly so. Uh, it's been a few hours, so we're gonna have... And you're not here, you went to work. Seve is here, West is there. Trixie is hanging out by the door as the door greeter. Yep. yep. Does he have a top top hat to as a and a monocle <laughs> and gloves? <laughs> next to the mm -hmm. next to the coat rack, and it's just like, I'll oh, just leave your coat with the pig. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys walk into the tavern and it's just kind of like a breath of we survived that <laughs> with as little incident as possible, which is quite a feat for all of you. So good job. Could have been worse. Pat yourselves on the back. Okay. So, oh, let me get one person here. And there you are. Okay. That's where we are. So. <laughs> guys walk into the tavern uh west is behind the counter uh kind of showing uh Zevier how to make a specific drink and Zevier is there with his little notebook taking notes as uh you will see uh gala tatarik just kind of like sitting at uh the bar kind of swirling a glass of wine herself just very poised picture of perfection uh care has gone to work as you can see by his absence and as you guys walk into the threshold of the tavern, uh, Cordelia and Tarsius, you see as your father immediately starts to like get the sniffles and then he tears up and he's just like, ah, where's my dear friend? <laughs> oh, awesome. And he goes running and it's like almost like a slow-mo scene where he's just like running towards, <laughs> but I think he's just running that slow, honestly. He's just <laughs> trying. <laughs> it looks like he's running. The beach montage Bo Derek run. Yeah. But that's just him actually running. <laughs> for dramatic effect. Yeah. yeah, of course, for dramatic effect. He just like, flips his hair to the side, and there's like sparkles of tears. <laughs> He's just like, West! And he runs around, and West sees him, and it's just like, oh shit, oh fuck, and like drops everything and then he picks up Chattington and like this big old hug and you feel like several ver you hear several vertebrae just like crack on his back and he's like ah <laughs> as these two men embrace and just to, just to solidify their beautiful friendship that they have forged over the years yeah. as he puts Chattington down and Chattington looks like he's trying not to fall over <laughs> but he's, he's being a real champ about it as Samantha just kind of like gathers her skirts, goes to find a, a table to sit at, and just kind of sits down, just like, well, we'll, we'll be here a while. As that's all going on, what's everybody, what's everybody doing? Gonna take a seat. Wait for the food. Yeah, wait for the food. Yeah, okay, so... As West is just like, alright, what does everybody want? What's going on? What did we miss? 
I would ask Cole why he looks stressed, but that's just his face. <laughs> Talk like that's just his child. <laughs> this grand waddles over this is, and does the same this with This is you. mommy, right? Yes, that is mommy. Me, mommy. <laughs> mommy. There you go. So pat the, the so pat the bench next to you. Yes, that. Yes, perfect. So. As food is brought out for whatever it is that you ordered for lunch, drinks are distributed. Chattington takes a seat across the way. As West will sit down over here. And it's like, Tarsus, get your stool over here. This is a family meeting. Okay, I'm coming. I'm just adjusting <laughs> the cameras. <laughs> Scoots. Yeah. There's a... He says that, Uncle Wes, I think there's, I read about this in school, there's an insurrection happening outside. Oh, God. <laughs> well, that's a big word, brother. Yeah. <laughs> that's a gold star word. <laughs> that's a cookie word. <laughs> that's a big word for Elba. Wes will be like, wow, that's crazy. I don't know what that is. <laughs> Hope they're having fun, whatever that means. <laughs> Samantha just very patiently explains to him what an insurrection is, and he's like, oh, that's bad. <laughs> uh, well, that sucks, so... I mean... I'm, it's fine. I, we've been through several insur... sections. Insur sections? Yeah. Close enough. Like, it's, it's, yeah, it's fine. I mean, it'll be fine. Probably. Yeah, it, it, some uh, cow was telling me about how there's like flyers all around about the end of the world, and I'm like, ah, end of the world happens at least like once a year. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, what's there to worry about? And then he mentioned that it has to do with like a giant five-headed dragon, and I'm like, so just more heads to chop off. Mm -hmm. Duh. That's how I feel. You're fine. Like, I, that makes a lot more sense to me. Like, you got a big dragon with five heads. All right, I guess I'm swinging an axe at it until all the heads are gone. But then, like, when it gets down into, like, the real, like, weird culty stuff, like... Like, like I don't even remember half of what happens down in that temple of Lamash 2. I just... It was all a blur. And you just kind of hear the... Uh, you, you kind of like Cowerbow appears for like a brief moment. And he's just like, it's because you weren't there for us, and then he just disappears again. So West is just like, oh yeah, banishment spell. <laughs> I just spend time with Grandma. That wasn't that wasn't fun. Grandma. Anyway, so, but it'll be fine. It'll be great. I'm. I, you guys seem pretty confident in it. Is Cole is like at the bar, like with his drink of choice, and he's just listening to to West and just there. There's like just a slight tremor in his hand <laughs> as he's listening. <laughs> as he like Hawk is in there, like draining what he's drinking. <laughs> it's like well, so Cole's just like, sure, yeah, it'll be great, it'll be fine. Obviously, I wish I could live in his world. <laughs> Hawk, like, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, so, um, and Cole's like, so, I wasn't, uh, I, I kind of stood outside for the council meeting, so how did it go, I guess? What is, uh, I know we have to wait for the Dragon Council, but what is, what is the general plan here? It sounds like they're going to try to fortify the city, just in case. That makes a lot of sense. They should probably do that. Um, um, Scala's just kind of swirling her glass of wine. It's just like, I mean, they could certainly try. Haku is like really not in picture. Like Gala, oh, it's it's nice to see you. Of course, likewise. Uh, least... I'm sorry. Did I scare you? And th you thought I was my brother. No, it's 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 welcome. It's nice to see you. At least at least one of the Tatterics likes it's me. It's perfectly fine. We're oh. twins in every regard. 
But he would um, say he's the prettier one. If, if in every regard, you should probably hate me, too. Um. I mean, in what way have you slighted me? Technically, I didn't slight Grayson, but... I cracked an inappropriate joke at his husband, and that was not forgiven. That was your mistake. I didn't know, in my defense. Oh. <laughs> Had I known, I never would have said anything. But. I mean, if you look between Grayson and his children, it was kind of a easy, you know, math problem to solve. I am bad at math. Oh. It's okay. Uh, she kind of, like, cups your cheek and gives a little pat. She's like, at least you're pretty. Thanks. How for a second they're like, I mean, I am, but thanks. Um. Say by this <laughs> point. Um, the uh, certain uh, cleric of Bahamut is going to make her way into the tavern oh. and take a seat next to her, not her, her, her beau, her beloved. As they kind of share a quick little kiss, and she'll kind of like regard you and just say, "Congratulations for your." Uh, it feels a little pious to call it an ascension, but congratulations for your, uh, you know, it's not every day that the Platinum Wand reaches out, especially for a knight in his service. That's fair. Please. Must have, I feel like uh, he's saved my ass a couple of times now. So. Looks like he's taken a liking to you. I don't know why. I mean... Unless it's for the same reason that his sister hates me. Well, I would probably say that, uh... And never tell this to a dragon, but... I think he, uh, sees a little of himself in you. It, it's... A little ironic that... You know, a... More or less god of dragons is... The more human out of most of them. But I didn't say that. <laughs> As a, she'll give a little wave to Zevier and he'll produce a drink for her as well. And she kind of takes a takes a drink, sighs, and just kind of like it and it feels like she's just kind of like easing off some weight that's been on her shoulder. It's like so uh Looks like we are fortifying a city for a potential siege of some kind. Yep. I don't know where they got their information on that, but... Hawk, Hawk is going to look at, at her and just smile and be like, well. Hi. Hi. It's me. I'm the problem. <laughs> um. Just love the honesty. Hawk, like, we retrieved the package. So if we get ah. scribed on, no one is, no one is the wiser what package. We retrieved the package, we just... How do you destroy? But oh. we didn't know <laughs> if we could be tracked here. She'll kind of, she'll kind of give a laugh. Oh, well, you don't. <laughs> That's what I thought. Uh, See, this particular package, and she will kind of like drum her nails on the on the countertop. This particular package is uh, one that was um, crafted, I will say, by uh, the uh, suspect of interest of this whole situation. The the Which it would it would be. I mean, it would be rather insulting for someone to, you know, tear apart an artisan's work without the artisan's permission, if you understand what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. Because the artisan's very essence, the very soul, I would say, if they were to have one, is more or less what makes the piece itself. 
So do you follow? We have to just destroy the many breathed bitch queen herself. Well, now you're just not being subtle. <laughs> Why I'm in this entire predicament in the first place, honestly. He's gonna look at Zevier and be like, can I have another drink? <laughs> um, um, should you? <laughs> should you? Wes is yes. like, Zevier, we don't ask that of people. Um, you just say yes and you give them the drink. He's like, and he's just like, I thought le legally we're not supposed to give more than four drinks per cuss. And it's just like, I don't fuck. Look. I can't, I can't count very high, but I could only count one drink, so he's fine. <laughs> well, my count Hawk count like, one. Hawk like breakfast drinks don't count because I left and came back. Um, exactly, see? Exactly that. It's on a different bill. So um, like, I mean, okay, I mean, it's not my establishment, but alright, sure. But if it was... <laughs> <laughs> but if it was, you cut off! <laughs> um, yeah. Hawk would be like, I mean, that's what got me into this singing one. the bug song. <laughs> oh my god! Oh, what? Um, the, the, she's singing a little a little bug song. That's what Patience uh, is doing right now. But yes, we uh, yeah, he'll be like, this is what got me into this whole thing in the first place. And we're the people here right now, and I think we're all kind of aware of the rights we're in. So. <clears throat> What do we do? If you can't... If, if, if... She is the only one who can unmake this. What do we do, Steven? Well, um... Seeing as how, once upon a time... As John was speaking, once upon a time, uh, we... And she will gesture between her and uh, Gala... We were the ones that were hunting for the masks mm -hmm. um, on the opposite side of the field, I will say, from where you currently stand. What people would do is simply hide them for as far as they could, as deep as they could in any cavern in the Underdark, in any mountain region, any depths of the ocean, they would hide them along the, you know, many corners of the world in hopes that nobody would ever look for them. But it just so happens that my brother uh, was given the vision to look for them by said artisan herself. Mm. He made a, not a pact, but he pledged himself to her cause. Hmm. And, um, I don't quite know how this happened. I don't really care to hear the story of it. But he pledged himself to her. She gave him the vision of the masks. And here we are. <laughs> it's a we don't know he's like I feel like the best place to hide it wouldn't even be here it would be on like a different plane like what are the odds of them having people on another plane not very likely but Well, I, I suppose it's like they wouldn't expect it either. Like, wouldn't that make it harder to find? Can you scry across planes? Roll me a history, Hawk. Be good at that, man. Alright, yeah. oh, yeah, sixteen. So you will remember uh, as you as your as the question poses itself in your mind, you think back to your uh, uh, run through those through Zonthal Tower, as the one of the last rooms that you ever saw of the place was the control room, and there was many different mirrors kind of like 
floating around in this room. And each mirror had a vision of different places in the world, and then also planes. As there was a reflection of what looked like a, uh, a city of brass in hell. But the city itself looked like it was like blurred and obscured purposefully, but there was a image of that being scried on the mirror. There was also an image of like a plane of water and also like a few other places as well, but yes. Yeah, Hawk will be like, eh. he'll he'll kind of like regurgitate that and be like, oh yeah, well. Yes, he's, it's he's, uh... he's, he's soundboarding right now. Like, uh, you know, but then they have the but. Then that comes down to resources. That comes down to having friends in high places and what have you, which they very much have right now. Which I will say, do they have the numbers to? do what the council said that they would do through every major city along the sword coast my answer will be no they do not they will say they do but the one thing that sa that my brother would not want to say out loud is that if these cities gather themselves or organize themselves under a single banner, if they have the Paladin Orders organize themselves under a single banner, their numbers will far outweigh whatever numbers they have amassed to welcome Tiamat in this world. Tiamat, Tiamat is their trump card. They're hoping that they can bring her out in time as they are in the midst of organizing to take these cities. Hawks and like, her avatar is here now i heard our shared benefactor told me yeah i'm sorry truly i'm gonna, sorry i it's gonna look like he's gonna open his mouth to say it's okay and he's just gonna be like it's not <laughs> I know what it feels like to lose a sibling. To be honest, for the longest time, I thought Severin was dead. Thought that we got separated, escaping the Underdark, and turns out he has been leading the cult that I had been a part of my entire life. Uh, a hawk will be like, like very quietly, but like, I think my sister might have been better off dead. Who? Gala he's, between both like, of you. Just... And like, he sat there like looking in his glass, and he like half like, not meaning for half laughs at it, and uh. He's just going to take a, a, a long sip off of his drink and be like, I guess it can't be that easy, can it? Gala will kind of stuck between both of you uh, lamenting about uh, about your siblings. Oh. Cute, I know what happened. Tell him to go Nini. No. Well, you're muted. <laughs> He'd already closed the door. Wow. Well, fine, I guess. So while you two, uh, while well, between uh, Janva and Hawk, as you two are lamenting about your sibling woes, Gala just kind of like leans back in her stool, kind of like, kind of like tips back the last of her wine, and she's just like, "Ah, siblings, don't we just love them?" Gala like their trauma bonding at the bar. Great. Yeah. Love it. Uh, she like looks across the bar to Zevi and just be like, "What would you do if your sister tried to take over the world?" And Zevi like, "She'd succeed. There's no if." <laughs> I'd let her. <laughs> uh, it's like she's ten years old, and I already know that she would run an army far better than anyone would give her credit to. It's kind of scary. 
Yes, that is the second most stressful child I have met in my entire yep. life. Yep. Um. So. Well, so this... we need to find a hiding place for a relic. This jungle will just kind of snap back from there. It's like, yes. That would be ideal. Dragons hate going. Well, that depends what on the opinion we... of the dragon. Hawk Lake. What if we give the mask to a giant? Well, now you're just talking crazy. I mean, I get to play both sides now, right? I am a paladin of Bahamut. Look at but that. But I am a rune that... knight. Isn't that funny? <laughs> I've brought balance to the force. You <laughs> did. You really did. You're playing uh, Grey Order right now, and I love it. And he's like, they have an ongoing feud and thing. I mean, does that give the giants some kind of leverage? I mean, I guess it depends on the giant and who they would use it, but. Down the will just kind of like delicately like reach your hand across to you. Uh, just kind of put it on your knee. Just like. I think that is a question for the council. It's something that you might not want to uh, leave them out of the loop on. That's fair, I guess I'm... They have quite a long memory. Y you not, know what? Not That's... doubting that giants don't as well. I'm very sure they do, but... Yeah. Dragons are known to hold grudges for generations. A hoard treasure and grudges? Look at that. Mm-hmm. Um... I mean, when, mm, it's going to be when we can get it together. Never mind. Yeah, which, that'll be up to them when they decide to arrive. So, and I'll say, before we move on to the next beat of story, is any, what's everybody else doing in the tavern? Patience, what's... Just laying on the carpet, just vibing there, and as... Gren is kind of like not curled up next to you, but he's flopped next to you and he's got like his belly facing the fire. <laughs> yeah. As Cordelia Tarsius, you are kind of catching your parents up on the details yeah. of your adventures, uh, leaving out all the gruesome bits, of course, just kind of trying to like PG it as much as you can. <laughs> yeah. And then we much. met a beholder. Yeah. And there was one dragon, and then there was another dragon, and then there was behold, and then there was another dragon. There was a the dead dragon, and the beholder was there too. Yeah. Oh my god! <laughs> the kraken. Oh, not the kraken. Then there was a fish. The guy had a, like a weird face, and he got turned into a fish. It was weird. Ah! How did he turn into a fish? What happened? <laughs> Magic. I don't know. <laughs> I don't understand it, but I'm learning. <laughs> oh, wait, are we talking about the shit? What? Sorry about the fish, I was like... Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was so poly... It was the mm -hmm. polygram spell. Oh, I know it quite oh, well, okay. and Cole just at the, de at, the, at, the, at the bar, like... You don't hear him, but Hawk will as he's right next to him, as you just... You hear him under his breath. Just... Just polymorph. Polymorph. <laughs> polymorph you see it's like it's his knee kind of shaking on the stool <laughs> just like, butchering uh, all their training God. everything they went through hawk like is that a favorite of yours i did i did very much um very nice. I'm sure she was. Did y'all find a beholder? In Waterdeep that doesn't belong- wait. Wait. So it's just kind of like- like kind of like quirks of brow. It's like you haven't heard about the-, the about the Xanathar's guild? Is he- that talk's gonna be like, y'all met Xanathar? The one with the goldfish? Is and you're alive? <laughs> Who's a, what's a Xanathar and why is there a goldfish? 
So you met a different beholder in Waterdeep. Not in Waterdeep. She was out in the in the woods. <laughs> I like her cookies. Her name is Aunt Betsy. Aunt Betsy. <laughs> yeah, the 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 nice lady who looked like she just points at Bach that looked like you. She uh. She took us to meet her. Hawk, like, okay. I, um, I guess. I, 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 assuming this all happened before I met all of you. Uh, Hawk, so as, as this conversation's happening, Hawk, you, f you hear, you feel a little tingle in the back of your head, and you hear a slimy little voice. Just kind of like worm its way into your mind, and it's like, don't get any ideas. You'd look horrible in drag. Oh, good. That's rude. <laughs> that's rude. Oh, wow, too. Yeah, like, I'd be like, I'm sorry. I didn't say anything. <laughs> oh no, 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 no! And he's gonna stop, and he's gonna look around. And he's like, wait a second. I'm like, I heard that. Roll me a perception. Hawk, Hawk, like, I'm going crazy. Cool. It was much better than I'm so, I'm so glad that I'm still wearing Care's Cloak of Eyes. <laughs> right. Because boy, oh boy. Okay, that's an 18. You don't see him around. Yeah, he's like, that, that was rude. Hold on, wait. And where are you? In case this is a... In case you can reply to this message. Yeah, yeah. Um. Nowhere important. Currently swimming with fishes. Swimming with fishes. Weird. Alright. Hog like, so he's anywhere between a barrel of fish and in... The ocean. Um, which your your thought process would be? Wait, he can't be in the ocean. There's salt in there. Salt is not good for his uh, skin condition. <laughs> yeah. And then he's like, "But he's also a vampire." The fish. Uh, nah. Uh, Was there any anyway. part of the conversation that Hawk had that uh, the other table heard? I'm pretty sure. Like, okay. like it, it's pretty quiet for like the lunch hours so which when chattington walked in west slapped a close sign on the on the outside of the tavern he's just like it's like private dinner or some shit like that i'm gonna ask uh patients if i can close for private for, party for colors what? oh you're asking for her colors yeah not the medical ones like mundane colors just the regular uh, your regular paints not your not your magic okay, paints She's also listening to this conversation. She's just scooting up, and she's gonna kind of like lay her head, like just down, like watching, like on the bear, bear. On the bear. It's, you watch. You're watching as Hawk's kind of having like a mental break of some kind. Or he's just like, "That was rude. Where are you even?" <laughs> like. Talking to. Did you finally snap? Do you need to sleep? Sleep. Hawk, like, I slept on the sofa at Donnie's last night. I'm fine. I have a little crack in my neck. But I'm fine. Um, no. My friend, the one that was hiding under the floorboards in here? It's in my brain. Talking to me. Yeah. Yeah, that's Smell the weird. one. He said he was sleeping with fishes right now, and I... Swimming. Swimming. That is a very important point. How can you hear me? <laughs> Uh, he said he's swimming with fishes right now. I'm scrying you through the shine of a fish's eyeball. That's impressive. <laughs> um, Hawk, so like, how many, fish. <laughs> Hawk, like, how many fingers am I holding up? <laughs> Just the one that matters. You got me. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm gonna ask everybody to come over here. Alright, I have I have a plan. I have a secret plan. 
to how to save the world. I just drew it. Oh, look at my boy! He's learning. That's that's the kind of that's the kind of wit that you get from going to the gentleman's school. <laughs> this is my drawing, as you can see. It, so we put the mask inside a bag, like a magic bag, okay. and nobody can see. And put that magic bag inside a magic chest that nobody can see. And then I know my cousins were in a small dimension. We put that all inside a small dimension. And then that small dimension is in my cousin's dad's castle thing in in uh, double E hockey stick. <laughs> and then no one will ever know. <laughs> You're explaining this plan. Uh, Zebby kind of like leans around Hawk, just kind of like staring at it. And you also see Cole just kind of like getting increasingly a little bit more stress. <laughs> As Cole's just like, that's not that. I made a couple of atomic bombs in this image. <laughs> but I'm sure. That is how Taurus is. Zebby, just like. Uh, what what um, can go wrong? So, yeah, you'd have to ask my, uh, you'd have to ask Pops first. Uh, he's, he, I don't think, uh, there, there might be some rules about that. Mm. Um, the, the big one being, uh, well, so, you know, the, 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 the Tiamat scenario, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. She is in hell. Oh, yeah. And, uh, kind of what, what, I mean, it's, like, it's, it's it's a great idea. Like, don't get me wrong. It's just a uh, in <laughs> for for those with uh with a with the high enough insight, you can tell he's trying his best to be enthusiastic about it. But you just know he's like he's just fighting every ounce of trying to correct this. He's just like yeah. It's like I don't get me wrong. This is like it's a great that you had this idea. Um, it's great that you thought. It's great that you had a thought. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. Um, my only, uh, at least from what I uh, can say about this, is that um, between my uh, dad's castle uh, and uh, the 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 lair that Tiamat sits in, there's uh, kind of a bridge that connects it. Um, okay. And, uh, that's why my that's why Pops is kind of pissed off right now because he has to keep watch on that bridge. Because otherwise, you know, he's gonna draw she's a gonna... bridge and then put an X on it. Okay, back to the drawing board. <laughs> okay, it's Cole just like kind of, kind of like whispers so that Tarsius can't really hear him, but just to the bar, it's just like, are we, are we not gonna discuss how putting a a uh, a demi plane inside a demi plane inside a demi plane is literally a means to rip a hole through the fucking fabric of the universe? <laughs> Hey, at least it would disappear. As will everything else. <laughs> Hulk, like, well, what if you just put, well, like, one, like a bag of... What if you put, like, food. one bag of holding... Like, you put the mask in a bag of holding, you put that bag of holding in one other bag of holding. Is that allowed? Doesn't that so, just... Wes just kind of, Wes kind of, like, sits there trying to follow, and then it feels like a synapse just fires up. He's like, no, that's how you make a sphere of annihilation. And everyone just, like, looks at him like, how the fuck do you know that? <laughs> Don't ask. Oh, like, okay, but how can you can can we use that? Uh, you shouldn't actually. Okay. Would it destroy the dragon mask? Uh, it, well, actually, probably. It kind of destroys everything. Oh, well, that's. The I don't know. I kind of uh left it in a dungeon somewhere. I don't want to talk about it. Hawk, like that sounds like overkill. Next. Um. Uh... Yeah, it's kind of one of those things where you don't really know it's there until, you know, well, you you don't know really, you don't really know it's there, because yeah. the second you find it, you're done. Anyway, I can just picture there's an alternate universe somewhere out there in the vast infinite multiverse that is imagination. But there's a campaign that has literally been destroyed, and all that's floating in the aether is just all the indestructible magical items. Yeah, there's nothing else. It's just like just magic shit just floating. That'd be a great Astral Sea campaign where you're just like traveling through and then you're just just like shit just floating in the sea and you're like, ah, oh, wonder what happened here. 
face junk. Yeah. But make it D and D. That'd be a great. That'd be a great uh, occupation uh, in Spelljammer. Just like just collecting junk in the astral sea. Yeah. It's a great item shop. Yeah. That's stranger. There's stranger. Yep. He's just. What are you doing in the bag of holding? I'm collecting shit. <laughs> Gotta make a living. See him put his snorkel back on and go in. <laughs> I'll click. Okay, 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 okay. What about a bag of devouring? It cancels out. The one moment where a cower bow just kind of appears, just like, you see him just peek around the corner. Yeah. And it's just... Let's, uh... Let's not do that. <laughs> he just... Like goes away again. The mask in the back. <laughs> Like he like like it's like one of those things where he like appears for a full minute and he just sits in the doorway just staring at Hawk. But if we give it he shakes his head. Hawk, Hawk, like it. Oh, okay. And just slides back in to, <laughs> into the shadows. Did you think I was gonna say Mr. Hawk? Mr. Hawk. Wow. Mm, wow. Yeah. I was gonna say wow. Hawk, like I don't know when I got a. Uh... Prefix. Oh, okay. I was like, is it because you're dad? It might. <laughs> it might be with the gray hair that you just adopted. Oh, look, what gray hair? <laughs> just right there, right by your temple. I see it. Who's saying that to him, Gala? Oh, Gala. Yeah. Was she saying it with like that shit eating like Tatteric smirk? Like you know they're fucking with you. He's like, get it. I don't want to look like your brother. <laughs> 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 you're right he'd probably f he'd, he'd probably lose his mind thinking that you're trying to copy him to steal his husband god and then she'll just reach over and just like yank it out ow um Hawk like you better not be calling me Mr. Hawk just because your dad's here no huh. she's doing it because she feels sorry for you <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 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 like, can I have another drink? <laughs> okay, uh, but this is your third one. I'm glad we're keep count. Three. <laughs> oh, um, and then I will tab out, I'll walk outside, I'll come back inside and start a new tab. Uh, That's not how that works. <laughs> Wes, is that how that works? Uh, Probably. It's worked for me. Uh, I might need to get a mustache. <laughs> Hawk's like, I have a beard. <laughs> and I'm not sure. Works for me. Works for me. And um, Zebby just like, this is how your establishment gets shut down. Wes is like, lighten up, the world's ending. Hawk's like, and it's all my fault. <laughs> oh. oh. So, Mr. Hawk. Was there any thought to that? Just Mr. Hawk. No, but when like, you better not be doing that because your dad's here and she's just like points to Hawk. Mr. Hawk points to Cole. Cole. Wow. Oh hi. Wow. Hawk like Hawk looks at Cole and like, oh you're that kind of parent, you're like the progressive ones that let your kids call you by their first name. I'm not. She's supposed to call me dad. Oh. Yikes. <laughs> so as this as this scene goes on uh, the door to the tavern will open even though it there it said it was closed for a private party uh the door to the tavern does open let me move things aside okay and a very familiar uh very large copper skinned man walks through and you will see jamal He'll just be like, the council is here. I... God. I think we should uh, move quickly. Yes, yep. Get Hawk like drains the drink. Let's go. And Yo, up he's. Ha so yeah, hauls himself up on this bar stool because. We've been here for like an hour and we've had three drinks. 
Um, you all stand up. Chattington also starts to stand up. He's like, oh, I think I should greet these uh, Council of Dragons. It's the most idea. appropriate thing to do. <laughs> and Samantha's just like, please sit down. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's not their name. They are literally dragons. And he's just like, uh oh. Well, I mean, I'm just, it's just polite manners. But, you know, maybe I will sit here and uh, keep, keep the seats warm. Okay, next time, Pops. Yeah, d next time for sure. Uh, do give them my regards. We will, Father. And then I'll be like, I guess by this time, I'll like, I'm showing off Mother, my sword, that cow. Uncle Kyle made for me and all that stuff. And then Ch um, Chaddington probably stole one of my sword. I was like, Father, can I have my sword back? I'm just testing the weight to make sure it's balanced for you, and he's gonna try probably, to like... Which, which one? Which one did he take? Because uh, I'm showing off the rapier. Because okay. that was the one that Uncle Kyle made for her. And was like, yeah. It's the dancing sword. So I summoned it back, basically. <laughs> That's quite the trick. It's a good thing it wasn't the good. A good thing it wasn't the rapier because I'm pretty sure if he touched it, it would have just tasered him. Yeah, probably. Look at all this hair. Oh, nice. Look at that. Yeah, I've got a lot of hair over here too. So, you guys gather your stuff. You get up. You head out to the meeting of <coughs> dragons so let's cut that music let me find some decent music oh, to like, use hello mr Jamal. do we need some kind afternoon. of afternoon offering to the dragons i'm going to say not this time I think this is a nice one. Okay. I didn't I don't have anything. Trying to debate if I like that music. I might keep that. Poppy. Good enough. Alright, so you head out, walk through the city as he will lead you out through the gates and take you into uh the woods nearby. As you guys are walking, you will see that um, the sun is starting to set for the day as it is kind of getting towards the uh, the twilight hours. And um, the the chill of the winter is just kind of feeling a little bit more uh, intense as you're now out uh, past the city walls. As the wind just kind of like whips past you from the coastline. And... And for now, the sun is shining. It is quite, uh, it's it's like a very nice kind of like, you know, when it's like winter and the, the sunlight feels just a little bit more intense, kind of like creating those vibrant like clashes of like pinks and blues across the sky as the sun's starting to kind of dip. And you will make your way out to a kind of like an empty-ish area. You can still see like the city walls, um, in the distance, but it's just far enough away that uh, it doesn't seem like the any any of like the uh, the tower guards will bother you. Yes, it's like a good thirty minute walk out, and you will find yourself in kind of like this sparse area of the woods. Uh, the grass is completely dried uh, for the season. You'll have a few trees that are still kind of clinging to what leaves that they have, uh, but the biggest uh, fixture of this whole scenario is the um as it looks like this giant kind of like this stone uh hand kind of like sitting in the dirt and it looks like it could have belonged to uh, a statue of some long forgotten you don't know what but it was a statue that once existed but probably fell through the many battles that the sword coast has seen in its centuries of existence and it's just been overtaken by time I will put you guys on the map. I need to get some other people on the map. As the first thing you will see is you will see the uh, you will see five uh, metallic dragons, each perched on a finger of one of these massive on these massive stone fingers, kind of clutching to it. 
as they're all kind of looking at you, these big, hulking, gargantuan uh, creatures. So let me grab a few people. I believe I needed... No, wrong map. Wrong folder. Okay. So I need you. One and the two and three. Four. Okay. So you have Jamal leading the way. Scout's kind of hanging back. So. so as you approach the uh, what is now the makeshift dais of this meeting of the dragons, uh, all of their heads just kind of like swivel to look at you. And I'm going to need everyone to make me wisdom saving throws, just for the sake of it. Let's go. Oh. Wiz. Plus two. Nineteen? That's a pass. Ten is a fail. Ten is a fail. Uh, you have dirty twenty? That's a pass. This is not a magical effect or anything, right? No, this is just sheer instinct. <laughs> Fourteen. 14, that is a fail. So for those that did not pass, you are now considered frightened <clears throat> of the dragons. Great. As you have five gargantuan uh, ancient dragons kind of all looking at you. And seeing that many dragons in this close of a space to you, it's a little overwhelming. <laughs> That's fair. That is very fair. Yeah. I, As I, the, uh, I would, in fact, be overwhelmed. Yes. I, I too, would be shitting my pants in fear. Yes. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> yes, Patience is, like, probably the only one unfazed here. She's just like, oh, look at them all. Gren is, like, up there, like, wagging his little tail, like, Mah. Yeah, he's, he's, Gren's trying to, like, waddle his way forward like he's, like, supposed to be there. He's like, where's my rock? Exactly I'm right. One of you. <laughs> he finds he finds like this little boulder that's the size of like an egg, and sits on it like ah. <laughs> that's precisely what happens. He finds like the closest like rock he can find, and he just like perches himself, and then he turns around to look at all of you, and the dragons just like look at this little little baby dragon. As the uh, the gold one will be the first to speak. This is uh, Protanther, the uh, basically the proclaimed king of the Metallics. As he would just say, it has been quite some time since we have seen one of a gemstone variety. Perhaps our kind is capable of healing. So he kind of like looks uh, like he's he's more regarding the the uh, the wormling than uh, you guys right now as uh he will speak to it, uh, he'll speak to Gren in Draconic, and for those that understand Draconic, he is basically asking and just like, tell me, what is your name, little one? And, uh, Gren will, uh, give a very kind of stunt, like, you know, like a toddler talking, trying, like, slurring through their words, trying their best, as he will proclaim his name. As Gren. So. Goodness. Yeah, unless we'll somebody grab, arm. unless somebody grabs my arm, Cordelia is just standing there. Yeah. <laughs> Hawk is doing the same. Hawk's like, oh. Hmm. It's John. John kind of like looks back at you guys, and it's like, try not to shake kind of activates a bit of a prey instinct in them. Which is just like, oh my god, he said his name! Yeah. <laughs> Hold on, I thought I had Cole on this map. Yeah, if he, I have when, uh, she turns to say that Tim Hawk's gonna be like, deep 
breath. Huh? He's probably been holding his breath. We're probably lucky his knees aren't locked. There we are. Okay, there's Dad. I'm like, where are you? There you are. Did, did the hawk fail as well? Hawk did fail, yes. Okay. Is it like noticeable? A virtue. <laughs> Or should I roll if I well, notice that? Well, he's certainly averting his eyes. Like he's, I th it's it's more of a we're kind of looking either in the middle distance or at the ground. Like you're, that's mm -hmm. where you feel is the safest to look right now. Did, did when you said take deep breath, did you say that out loud to yourself at least? Probably. Or did you just think it? He's had a couple of drinks, so probably the the internal monologue is probably getting a little fuzzy. Okay. Um, I guess you'll just notice you'll just notice there's a small little Medusa holding your arm, kind of like interlocking, kind of like that, you know, like I'm a princess, so go like that to your arm. And when you said, take a deep breath, I will also take a deep breath. <laughs> I guess she does that, and they both take that deep breath, and he sits there and pat Cordelia's hand like where it's on her. And it's like, yeah. he's doing it. And it's like he's it is a comforting gesture for her, but it is also comforting for him. <laughs> he's like, Yes. <laughs> yes, good. Yeah, like, yeah, I'm also scared. <laughs> right? Yes, we can be scared together. Patience is gonna approach Jamal. Okay. And in Draconic just ask him like, can we approach or Nicole's just like Chris Mary? <laughs> <laughs> Jamal's like, uh, let me speak first. As uh, Jamal will approach and he will kind of have his head kind of down in uh, respect as he speaks in Draconic to them. As he will basically say that um, that he has brought the, you know, the ones that carry the mask and that they wish to approach you on what to do next as they also wish to keep um, Tiamat confined to her cage as the dragons just kind of like like turn their attention back to you again as they're looking all, they're all looking at you and um uh, Protanther kind of like raises his head up and not, none of them are moving from their perches as uh, Protanther then like looks at each and every one of you and you just kind of feel that overwhelming smallness, which Tarsis, that is, that is a feeling you don't feel very often mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> as you are like, uh, as the, th as the thought dawns on you, I am looking at a creature that has been alive longer than I can conceive like that is longer than I can possibly imagine to think what these eyes have seen that are now staring at me as uh, Protanther will speak to you in common as his voice will kind of rumble deeply in his chest as he will say you may approach no one moves Also down. I have a feeling that is one thing that was drilled into her being living under Shervidia's house. Oh, I guarantee you that green dragon like slapped you with the chocolate every time you try to look her in the eye. She'd be like, ah, don't be disrespectful. <laughs> She'll just go and stand next to Bren. All right, what's the rest of you doing? Uh, you were told to approach. Look at everybody and start moving slowly. Just didn't want to be the first one. Yep. Hawk will like kind of like start to trudge and like patting Cordelia's hand again. <laughs> like, yes, we get closer. John, but kind of looks back at both of you and it's like, would you like me to hold your hand too? <laughs> I know, uh, Cordelia is already short enough as it is, especially compared to kind of Dex to Hawk, because he's of the tall variety. But you will notice uh, Cordelia kind of gets smaller every time you pat her, because she would get like, 
<laughs> You're like, wow, I didn't realize she was that small. A little bit. <laughs> Like it is comforting to her, but also she's just like she's having a hard time to walk. As you're like trying to walk with Cordelia, you like hockey. You look over, and you're like, is she shrinking her? <laughs> like, look, you were already small, or I'm tall, or both. Like, <laughs> eh. As a Gala will kind of like make her way around you guys, hook her arm in Paul's, and just be like, so we are the others, so we're going to keep ourselves a respectful distance away. Cole's like, I really don't want it. It's like, you're going to... It doesn't matter what you want. <laughs> you're going to give yourself a respectful distance away. A respectful distance away. Otherwise, everyone here gets incinerated and nothing's going to get solved. Okay, so are we walking that way towards Jamal? Yep. Yep. Okay. So Janva will walk ahead of you guys, not really giving any pause <laughs> of how, how you feel about it. So close to the dragon. <laughs> as uh, Protanther first in Draconic, as patients will uh, understand, uh, the first thing he will say to uh, not Protanther, but the um, what the fuck is your name? Uh, Nimur, which is the bronze one. As Nimur will kind of regard uh, Jamal, uh, which is going to be this fellow right here. <laughs> And in Draconic, you will say, Why is it you shame yourself by approaching us in such a small form? You are among the Council of the Dragons. You should approach as a dragon. Why lower yourself to their level? <laughs> and... <laughs> What's that mean for patience? We don't know. Mr. Jamal just kind of like nods his head, and he lo he looks up to the to the council member as he will respond in Draconic, just to say, "I am merely acting as a liaison between the ones that carry the dragon mask and to your great council." I apologize if my form shames you, but I understand it's a lot easier to move through cities as this. And one, the the uh, the bronze one just kind of gives like this frustrated chuff but just kind of settles back onto his perch as Protanther will look to all of you just like so we were brought here on the information that you have a relic Tiamat. Hawk just nodding. <laughs> How did you come across such a thing? Over. Confused yeah. a little yeah. bit. Hawk, Over. Hawk, like finding his words again. Like, well, we tried to save someone and failed, but the kid pickpocketed him, I guess. And st stole it. Perhaps you did not uh, understand me. You are in possession of a mask. And what color, may I ask, is this mask? <laughs> Patience trying to be dragon. She's like, it's, it's blue. Hawk, like, I don't know what colors are right now. Blue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that means you had to face a dragon of that similar color. And you were to tell me that you fell, Lenenthon. Yeah, he kissed my sister. <laughs> God. <laughs> Under my breath. Oh, is it the mouse? Yes. <laughs> Jamal just kind of leans over to you, Hog, and is like, they they do not like jokes. <laughs> I'm not joking. He kissed my sister. <laughs> oh. Um. Uh, yes, Lennon 
Lenanthon is dead. So they kind of like look amongst each other and uh, uh, the copper one will speak as she will say, good. I'm glad. Lenanthon has always been greedy. As taking more than what he is allowed. Chasing dragons out of their rightfully earned territories, sneaking his way in like some kind of parasite, using the humans to more or less fortify his own territories. That makes him far more cowardly than any of the chromatics truly tend to be. is to defend his territory, he does so with tooth and claw and blood. To use those of a weaker species. It's shameful. Yeah. <clears throat> she said, uh, with the whole question, uh, not the question, but the statement of mm -hmm. chasing dragons out of territories and from what patients learned. Yeah, she's like, any of you heard if sure that the, uh, uh, the Evergreen was able to get her territory back? As they kind of, like, look amongst each other. And, uh... The, uh, the copper one, uh, Tazmichella, as we know her. It was a unfortunately child. What the... Those of the chromatic spectrum do, that is not... I will say this as... Politely as... I am capable. She's not one that is on our radar, particularly. Whether or not she regains her territory is up to her. If she gets it back, then it was by her right to do so. If she doesn't, then... That is of no concern of mine. I'm sure if she's fine, and if this is a dragon that you hold a an attachment to, she will make her way to you one way or the other. As the, uh... The, uh, the silver one, um, uh, Otari, for simplicity's sake, as their full name is Otari Liakanos. We stick with Otari. They'll kind of, uh, the silver one will just kind of, like, tilt their head to the side, uh, looking to all of you and just like, So is it true? What they were doing in Termish. Trying to force those of your species to adhere to the likeness of dragons. I could sit there like they weren't trying. They were doing. So even though the they pledged themselves to Tiamat and revel in all her glory, they still attempt to make a mockery of dragons. That is unfortunate. So uh, Protanther will nod his head and just... Yes, we will have to see about uh, exterminating every bit of those that we come across can't leave any trace of those abominations. No. 
Did you say no? <laughs> yeah, Hawk, like, no in, like, agreeance. No, you, you can't leave. They can't be allowed to stay. Okay. So you're telling them, no, you can't do that. And you're like, excuse me. <laughs> the golden dragon, like, like, bitch, <laughs> who are you? Uh, no, Hawk, Hawk will sit there and be like, no, I can't. Right. So that will be one of the next steps to take. But I suppose the main question here is what are we doing with the mask? Well, I've been advised that we can't destroy holy relics. Of course not. Because not... we didn't make them. Yes, so that's... We're hoping that you might have some ideas. So we can take the mask, if that is what you want, as this is entirely the business of our lord, Bahamut. If you give us the mask, then we will make sure to uh, take it to one of his temples. We could have it... well, not sure if we'd be able to be able to you know, cleanse it, for lack of a better word. Desecrate, I guess is the word. Consecrate. There it is. Consecrate it. Be able to consecrate it. As this is a relic of his sister. And while Bahamut's powers is quite immeasurable, Tiamat's corruption knows no bounds. We can ensure we can keep it safe, but as far as destroying it, that is an entirely different matter that is a lot more complex that you're incapable of grasping. All right, so... Well, to put it simply, as simply as we can for you, draconic magic lies on a far more complex well than, say, whatever it is Mistra grants you. Right. Um. So, say we do that. You, you take the mask, you hide it in a temple. What then happens when the avatar of Tiamat decides to set her sights on anyone else? As there is kind of like a, a rumble of conversation amongst the dragons in Draconic. As uh, patients, you pick up like pockets of it here and there. As they're all kind of talking over each other like a bit. This is this is definitely a tense uh, point of conversation for them. As it's uh, very much of, yes, what are we to do with the, the Avatar? You know, this is uh, something that is not supposed to be here. As... Uh, Protanther gives like this like rumbling kind of like exhale of smoke and they all silence immediately and he's like yes the business of the abomination that Tiamat has claimed as an avatar it will be destroyed as it is our duty to do so as I said we are going to make sure we eliminate every last abomination of mortal and dr draconic amalgamations and that thing also falls in line with that it was something that was crafted by her servants something that is it, it should not be and if it decides to set its sights here then we will meet it. And we will meet it and we will destroy it. 
we will cleanse it in the name of our Lord. We cannot let this insult continue to exist on this plane. Sitting there, like, nodding, like, he looks upset, but he's, he's nodding. Mm-hmm. As the uh, the bronze one uh, will speak again, uh, Nemer, as he kind of like gives like this indignant snort, and just like what is there to save? It is what is there to save? My sister. So a human that has been twisted and. You know, it has twisted and tainted with the parts of deceased dragons. But okay. my, my only remaining family. Most important person to me in the whole world. enough to spell magic could do something? This, uh, Nimer will, again, snort and just, like, again. Draconic magic and what you call magic are two different things. Whatever parlor tricks Mistra hands out to you, just pay, they pale in comparison to the magic amongst dragons that is earned. to dispel magic on one of the dragon abominations and they were able to stay sane and kept their mind. As Taz McKella will speak up next uh, looking to Nimmer and just say well draconic magic or no it seems that these things are crafted with their magic and if their magic is able to dispel whatever it is these wizards are doing there is hope. I would say. Nimmer will uh, come as close as a dragon can to rolling his eyes. Just regardless, this is a entity. This is a mistake that has been corrupted by the essence of Tiamat. Say that if you are able to heal her of the abnormalities that sh that have been cursed upon this human. Who is to say if her soul will remain the same? We're at talk, I guess. Just kind of like shrug, just like listen that up to her soul then? Stjanvil will kind of step in just like, well, you're Magnificences. I believe uh, the human that you speak to, that um, the uh, avatar of Tiamat is uh, bound by blood to, as the avatar is his living sister, uh, our lord, Bahamut, has actually inscripted him to our fight against Tiamat. He is one of our newest paladins of Bahamut. So I think it's within Bahamut's will that we try to save her. And when she says this, like, you watch all the dragon's heads just kind of, like, rear back, like, and look at Hawk. Like, scrutinizingly so. They're just, like, staring at you, like... This guy? This guy, <laughs> yeah. Him? <laughs> As Protanther will take a deep inhale of his breath. And it almost feels like he's about to, like, expel a uh, fire. But then he just sighs and, like, the smoke rolls out of his nostrils. I see. 
well. If it is Bahamut's will, then we must abide by it. Even if we don't agree with it. If he thinks there is a chance to heal this human, then we have to try. So, for now, we will take the mask. We will make sure to hold on to it and but if Bahamut chose you and he looks to you, Hawk, then it seems it is up to you to destroy his sister's avatar. Hawk just sits there and, and nods. Yes. And as, it's, as they uh, kind of, like, seem to, like, nod in agreeance to this, uh, another voice pipes up. As you hear the sound of brush, like, dry brush cracking as these heavy, thunderous footfalls approach into the clearing. And, uh, Patience, you hear a familiar voice as a gargantuan red dragon approaches out of the brush. <laughs> As he Aww. says, how about I propose a different offer? You give me the mask. And I won't have to take your hearts. And that's where we're going to leave it for tonight. As it is past time, and if this continues on, we're going to be here a while, so... <laughs> Oh, like, what a time for the cleric to be saying. napping. Yeah, yeah. What a time. These guys are being douchebags, and then another douchebag comes. And an even bigger douchebag shows up. <laughs> I was about to say, I mean, yeah, Cormorant is like at the top of the list of douchebags. Yeah. He's like chief douchebag, like general of the douchebags. The vice, vice douchebag of the douchebag committee. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Alright. Enough of Jakey's commentary. So, <laughs> <laughs> this is where we will leave it for tonight. As you guys have converged with the Dragon Council, you are trying to work through your deals of how they will aid you in your fight against Tiamat. But it, now it seems that one of Tiamat's top chosen have approached with a counter offer. That's. I mean, you can refuse, but he's not going to like it. How about no? Okay, so. As he approaches with give him the mask. Or he's taking some hearts. And he's not saying that because it's almost Valentine's Day. So. I was about, like, if Hawk were his usual self. Mm. Like, look, you have to ask me on a date first. Yeah. So, uh, no game next week because I will be out of town doing something of familial obligation. We will pick up again probably the week after and see where we go from there. So until then, uh, enjoy this cliffhanger. It's Oof. going to be a fun one when we come back. Yeah. And uh, yeah, you guys have a week until the apocalypse. Let's see what happens. <laughs> so awesome. yay. yay. So with that, thank you guys for playing. Thanks for people that watched and night. Night, everybody. Adios. Bye. Damn.